I tried all these other psych meds and sleep meds and all the stuff the doctors could throw at me, really, to try to uh, sort my brain out. But uh, cannabis is honestly the most effective. I knew that I needed something to help with my anxiety and I wasn't yet ready to go and see a doctor and I didn't want to start drinking. So I went from smoking cannabis recreationally to smoking it medicinally. I took as many over-the-counter Tylenols and, and what have you, like sleeping pills to... If it was over-the-counter, I was thinking it was okay in my mind, but again, it wasn't. At the time, I was still, uh, this is for drug users and this is going to be bad and I don't need it, but I was so tired of the over-the-counter stuff and I didn't want to go towards the opioids. I was like, it's time I try CBD oil. I was having a lot of trouble with sleeping. I was suffering from a lot of depression. Most of my symptoms at that time were depression and I couldn't sleep. At the time I read the federal government guidelines for who should get medical marijuana and they explicitly at the time said no, no psychiatric issues like bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever. The area of, of, of medical cannabis or cannabis being used to, to treat mental health conditions is, uh, is an interesting area. I just published with a group of co-authors a position statement for the Canadian Psychiatric Association on the use of cannabinoids for mental health. The guidance that could come out of that is that we actually still don't have a whole lot of information, a whole lot of good trials uh, that have indicated any uh, uh, benefits uh, randomized control trials that have indicated any benefits with respect to the use of cannab cannabinoids in, uh, uh, in, in mental illness, and which surprises, I think, some, some people. Actually, the number of studies, the number of randomized control trials is actually really quite low in this area. You know, we're saying there's a lack of evidence, uh, but it's not necessarily saying that there's, you know, it doesn't have any evidence. We doctors don't know which are the real side effects of a THC. We don't have a phase three study that say this drug is really good for uh, uh, lower back pain, for example. We don't have this. For this reason, the official medicine uh, is a little bit ambivalent to use uh, the cannabis. Doctors don't feel safe to prescribe the cannabis. You know, we're a little bit behind on the research because, uh, you know, cannabis was an illegal substance. So it's actually difficult to do research on an illegal substance. And, and I think that's actually prevented us from, you know, developing the knowledge base that we need to, you know, uh, to be informed. With depression and anxiety in particular, I mean, cannabis instantly makes me happy and relaxed, therefore combating my depression and anxiety. I could just relate so much better to everything in life um, if I had a couple of tokes. It just cheers me up, relaxes me, and I can think straight again. The kind of unexpected side effect that I had from the cannabis, I was expecting to just use it for sleep. But I had had terrible bipolar depression all my life. I started trying to commit suicide when I was a child. That's how bad it was. When I started taking the cannabis after about two or three weeks, I noticed that my mood was much better and that I was much more active and that I was doing things around the house and not neglecting myself like I had been under under the depression, the bipolar depression. I'm not stoned all the time, but when I'm going into situations where I know that I'm gonna be anxious, a puff here or there really does make the difference between my comfort level and my being able to communicate with other people. I smoke once in the morning and then once in the evening. I get high probably for half an hour, which is great, it's a nice feeling, but then it's the, the few hours of the residual effects that follow which are, which are really beneficial for me. It's just the relaxation, the weight that's lifted off my shoulders, the what if questions start to go away, I start ruminating less and just generally feel happier. Another, another unexpected side effect, I have pretty bad arthritis in my knees and my spine and I have a lot of pain. And I've always had to kind of power through it because none of the medications really worked. And now I was finding that my pain was less. And that was helping me to get caught up with activities, go out and get exercise. It had a much uh, greater positive effect than what I had even been expecting. Cannabis helped, helped. It helped me cope with the anxiety that the booze masked. 
because I found that it helped me talk. It, it, it was easier to talk than it was, you know, when you're either drunk or ashamed. And in, you know, and either way, you can't you can't tell people what you're feeling. I could be more open. I could I could verbalize what I was, you know, all the pain and all the things that were going on in my in my head. Just made I guess it just made 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 things a lot less scary. Where the mental health came in is you, you don't want to ask for help. You know, you, you start to feel uh, well. I can push through other things before, like. It, when you get, like I said, that hardwired, you exist, you don't manage, you know what I mean? And I found that with cannabis, I can go, going back to existing and back to, I mean, back to managing and enjoying my life and just other other avenues of it. Like I don't, I nowhere near weigh 400 pounds anymore and stuff like that. Like I've improved my, my life with cannabis. Everybody, that consume cannabis, in particular, high level of uh, THC concentration, can have a psychosis. A psychosis when uh, we are dissociated, we are not uh, anymore in our mind. We have a lot of paranoia, delusion of paranoia, and uh, hallucination, and uh, it's a very, very traumatic experience. Well, there is one thing that I'd like to touch on, because it's quite important for people to know if they have a mental health issue and they're considering using cannabis. And that is the psychosis that you can get from medical, from cannabis when you first take it, when you're, when you're high on it. Sometimes your thoughts can go on a tangent and you can become paranoid, you can become frightened, you can become upset. And the other thing is it doesn't happen to me every night. It just happens once in a while. And I've been taking it since 2014. An interesting discussion I have with, with some of the, the patients that I see, you know, I talk, you know, we have a discussion about cannabis being natural. And I, I do bring up that, well, you know, natural cannabis is only about one to 2% THC. And the product that's there today and that you see in the regulated um, dispensaries around 15, 20, 25% THC. So that's not natural THC, the natural cannabis. I mean, it's been genetically modified to have that higher THC higher THC product confers increased risk for that development of psychosis. As a modifiable risk factor, that is something that we, you know, we have those discussions about, about reduction of the, the THC percentage of product that people are using. Since October 2019, my marriage has fallen apart. Uh, we're in a pandemic and we've had homeschooling, all kinds of different variants, but I found Cannabis, if anything, helped me to deal with all that. I do believe if I didn't start using cannabis, you know, in uh, 2018 or 2017, I think it was, I wouldn't, would I be here? Yes, but I wouldn't be the man I am right now, uh, dealing with my anxieties, dealing with my issues. So I, I'm not afraid to show my kids that dad uses this for medicine. And yeah, it's, you know, at a quite a big, big dosage, but when was the last time dad actually screamed? When was the last, you know? dad's overall health is better and I'm able to talk about things like this with my kids like you know it's okay to struggle and you have avenues around that and one of mine is cannabis that's not the only go-to that I use that's part of the reason why I wanted to take part of this because it takes more than just smoking or ingesting or, or topicals right it's a process to find your, your mental health path I find.